Hi everybody, it's starting to snow. You know what that means. Snowball fight! Incoming! <laughs> Got ya. Welcome to Fiddle Sticks and Stitches, I'm Fiddle. Today's project is this miniature wood-burning stove with working doors. The pots and pans will come in another video. As always, link to materials and supplies is listed in the description along with a free printable pattern. The first thing you're going to want to do is cut out all of your pieces except for the upper shelf. We're going to save that piece for later. The trickiest piece to cut is the face of the stove because you want to keep that all in one piece and just remove the openings. The easiest way to do that was to go back and forth between my cuts, vertical to horizontal, until it finally came loose. The first two pieces that we are going to need are labeled the bottom and the back on our pattern sheet. If you had problems getting the curvature on the back of the stove, I used a piece of sandpaper and marker to get in there. To glue these pieces together, you're going to want to make sure that the back piece is centered on the bottom, leaving a small ledge on either side. I used the lines of my craft mat to make sure that the back was straight and propped it up against my glue bottle to dry. Next pieces we're going to need are the sidewalls and the divider. After you get one of the sidewalls glued on, place the face of the stove in front so that way you can see where the dividing line for the separation between your openings are and you can put your divider wall in that spot. As always, allow for drying time. The next two pieces we're going to need is the face and the top. The first piece we're going to glue down is the face, that way our top is level. There will be a bit of overhang all the way around. The next piece we're going to be working on is the stove pipe. I used a piece of plastic tubing. You can use a boba tea straw. Anything that is thick and round will work for this. To make it look like it is part of the back of the stove, you want to place it on your stove on the top surface and measure out how far up the back of the stove comes to your tube and cut a slit about a quarter of an inch wide all the way to that point. I had to go back and re-record this part so I did not actually show me attaching it to the stove. However, you would want to do it in the orientation that I'm showing. The next piece of the pattern that we're going to need is the legs. For this, you're going to want to cut this piece out, fold it in half, and cut out the areas that are not intersecting, but make sure they're still attached. Take your big square dowel, hold it there with your fingers, trace out the pattern, then, using a knife, knock down the big corners so you can start to get some of the detail in it. Once you think you have your rough shape down, go in with your sanding utensils. I use all kinds of different things for this, from fingernail files to metal files to sand them down into the shape that I wanted. Next, I took my ruler and measured 3 eighths of an inch all the way around the base so I knew where I needed to put my legs. The next pieces we would need are the burners. For these, I traced them onto popsicle sticks and glued one side of them, and I should not have done this. I should have done both sides, but I did this to try to help prevent them from breaking while I was cutting them out. Unfortunately, I wet my brush before I put it in the glue, and that extra water made these pieces warp, and it made it a little harder to attach them. The next piece is the grate. Originally, I wanted to use a metal mesh, and I got a nice little strainer. Unfortunately, it was stainless steel, so I couldn't cut through it. My next best option was plastic. This was from a giant bowl of ricotta cheese that had a built-in strainer, and I just saved it for unknown purposes, and it finally came in useful. The first thing you want to do is sand your piece so that way the paint will stick to it. Then give it a coat of black paint. Okay, the burners are dry now, so let's go back to them. Oops. That happens sometimes. To cut them out, I just cut straight lines until I had a circle, and then sand the edges down. The orientation you put your burners in is completely up to you. I went with one big burner on one side, the two 
mid-size burners I put towards the back and the smaller ones I put at the front. Somewhere in this time, and I must have missed it, I glued down bracer bars inside of the stove for our grate that we had painted earlier. The next piece we're going to be working on is the upper shelf. Remember the red flame at the beginning of the video? Yeah, we're going to need that circle that you cut out from your stove pipe. Cut the pattern in the rectangle shape, leaving out the circle, so that way you can measure it in later. Take your pattern and place it to the back of your stove, marking out where your pipe is located. Take your circle and trace it onto the pattern in between your markings. Transfer to your wood and then it's time to cut out. The best way I found to do this inner circle was to first score all the way around the shape and then go back and forth between vertical and horizontal cuts until each section has come out. After getting the circle cut out, do a little bit of sanding in there to knock down the hard edges and be sure to fit it over the stovepipe and make sure it fits. If there's any gaps, you can always use the super glue baking soda mix in any of your crevices that you have. We'll take them away right quick. And I am sorry about the angles. I tried to record with two different cameras from two different positions to get me more coverage. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that the program that I was using, you can only record the screen that is up. So if I have the program open and I have two cameras going, whatever camera is on the screen at that point in time is the one that is getting the footage. I didn't know that and I decided to keep it on this angle because I knew that this angle would be the hardest for me to stay in so I wanted to have it up on screen so that way I could see that I was still in frame. Unfortunately that backfired because I don't have my top down angle. The next pieces we are going to be working on are the doors and hinges. Okay the first thing you're going to want to do before anything else is after you cut them out paint them in a layer of glue this makes them less prone to splitting because we're going to be poking holes in the circle area of each piece and that's what we're going to string our wire through after poking all the holes you can glue the hinges to the doors and set them aside to dry the next thing you're going to want to do is paint the whole stove inside out top bottom back even the pipe with a layer of wood glue. This takes the wood grain away and smooths the surface out to make it look like a cast iron stove. Once everything's had enough time to dry, take your doors and lay them on top of the stove where they would be sitting and mark out a spot where the holes line up. But make sure your doors are straight and they both fit on there before you mark it out. When you have that done, take your pokey tool or hand drill or whatever you're using and poke your holes. This would be the inlet for our wire hinges. Okay, once we've got that done, it's time to grab our wire and pliers. For this, we're going to be making a U shape or half of a rectangle and we need to go from the holes that we just made on the stove. You don't want to use the doors because you need a little bit of extra room between the wood part of the hinge and the bend of the metal. Make sure that you leave your end pieces about a quarter to a half of an inch long. For the second hinge or the second door, I went ahead and used my first one as a model to get a uniform hinge size. Now we need to straighten our wires back out so we can string the door on. It may take some encouragement, but take your time and eventually we'll get it through. Make sure you center the door on the wire and then we're going to coat it in a layer of glue just like we did for the stove itself. To give the door some drying time, we can go ahead and move on to painting the stove. I did mine in a couple layers of matte black. I did the inside and the stove pipe, even though mine is black. If you would like to add more color instead of it just being 
a cast iron looking. I used a brown with a gold over top of it that kind of made it look copper on the upper shelf and the door handles. I think the doors would have also looked good as the copper color. I think I'll keep that in mind for next time. Now, we have two burners left and this is where we're going to attach them. These are the little pedestals that sit on each side of the stove. To do this, I took a little scrap of wood and just cut a tiny little square out and that is going to be a little bracer bar to make sure that our circles stay where they're supposed to be. Thank you, past me. It really helps to actually see what we're doing. <laughs> now that our bracer bars are on, we can add our pedestals, and I just did that with wood glue. While I'm painting away here, I am going to explain how I did the doors because I obviously did not record that and I didn't know that until now. <laughs> um, the way to attach the doors is after you get the wire on, you bend the ends where you had them bent before and then stick them through the holes that you made on the stove, open the door and bend them on the other side, on the inside of the stove and get a little bit of an E6000 type glue and put some on your finger and put it on that wire that you bent up on the inside. The last and final thing we have to do for this project is make the door handles. For this we're going to need two small oval wood beads and probably about an inch of wire each. We're going to make an eye hook at one end place our bead on it and then bend it at the other end of the bead and then stick that end through the wood, bend it in back and put a dab of glue just like we did for the hinges. I hope that I explained that right and you understood it, but that brings us to the end of our project. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe because it helps me out a lot and I'll see you next time.